You brought this to my attention. So I'll tell you what I understand this from my little knowledge about it, and you can correct me, is really right now you and I have uh, gaming desktops to do some of the prototypes and things we need to do, right? Not everybody, first of all, understands how to download a language model, set it up, and they, they have, but they just want to do some prototypes and how can we make that happen? This is one of the companies that is doing it where you can buy these small, uh, I'll just call them like a dongle or small um, products that can help you. They can preload applications to it and it's, 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 it's a, it runs by itself, but it can also help you prototype some of your applications and be able to see if you can on work on any device, on uh, anybody's home or even small uh, scale devices. You don't need like a full blown desktop to make these work. That's my understanding is how do these products help you with prototyping uh, and it's helpful even if you don't understand the background very well. So this makes it easy for you to build some systems. So what do you, what is your, uh, how do you define these products? Oh, absolutely. Um, so this, um, again, I keep an eye uh, on some of these developer boards I, ever since Raspberry Pi came out being the, the cheapest uh, and the smallest uh, little computer that you can have and play with. Um, a lot of these boards um, are are being, I think NVIDIA has a Jetson um, a toolkit. Um, so all of these are like for developers to play with, which is an interesting intersection of software and hardware, right? People who are curious how to mix and match this hardware and the software to get it to the edge, right? That's the focus here, right? How can you bring, these are very power efficient type of devices, right? It's not like they consume they're not gas guzzlers. They, they they operate on very low wattage and they do very limited things. Um, now the the reason why these exist is for innovation to happen in that edge compute, right? It's, a lot of these IoT devices similarly evolved when IoT became a thing, right? So uh, for AI right. now now you have um, let's say this coral um, coral USB C dongle, right? Um, so imagine you have a hardware that's not AI ready yet, or it has less capacity to do things, and you can stick this as a USB-C port into that uh, computer, right? It's a, it could be an Android phone, it, it could be your uh, desktop computer or older model, right? So, and these, yeah. I think um, they do like uh, 4 trillion operations per second. This basically defines how many, uh, how many um, mathematical operations or matrix operations they define it in different the metrics, um, but it's it's good enough um, to do um, operations like um, identifying uh, 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 what you call the computer vision tasks, right? Like you can uh, spot a body movement if it, if it has a camera, or it can identify certain things in that uh, that something is moving. So its primary use case right now seems like people are using it in their um, home security, right? So one of the concerns, again, this is all interleaved into privacy concerns, right? A lot of home security cameras, uh, they're easy to install. I'm sure you have one, I have the Amazon mm -hmm. stuff, um, but they they have this habit of uploading everything to the cloud, right? So your entire uh, surrounding of your house, inside or outside, um, is being uploaded to the cloud and, and being processed to figure out something moved or something happened or this or that. It catalogs everything there, right? Um, so what if you can have one of these devices detect motion? Uh, in fact, this one does even uh, uh, faster than the Amazon Blink or others, which I think these do at 30 frames a second or higher. Um, so uh, detecting things faster, but it also gives you opportunity to keep your data and not leave your, your uh, house, right? That's where some of these experimentation, but um, there could be a lot of applications where um, you can basically stick that in a in a small, a low power um, device to do some uh, image recognition or text generation or things like that, right? And people play with Raspberry Pi all day with different versions of uh, so so that's the use case here. It's for the edge use case, right? Edge use case where can you bring some more power to to the edge and see what you can achieve. Um, and, and it's fun. Well, I, I think it's fun thing for, time. yeah, high school, college kids, everybody to play with, right? Do some prototypes. It's a fun, fun thing. I, and I mean, I want to talk about it, but what is, how much do these cost? 
Oh, these are, I think this thumb drive, I think the boards are probably cheaper. The thumb drive, I think it's 50 bucks, right? It's very affordable for you to, uh, I think it's, uh, there you go, the prices, right? There's oh, yeah. a develop, developer board is 129, which is, I think, very similar to your Raspberry Pi type of pricing. Um, the the yeah. USB C one is just for accelerator, right? So it's it's USB three. You can't do it at USB two because there's still enough data flowing through this um, compatible with other. So for sixty bucks, so it's a very yeah yeah. For sixty bucks, you can to your point uh, even um, you can build a drone. You, you can, can you can stick it in there and it'll spot people right flying around. And to, I mean, the other side is what I was thinking about this is, let's say a lot of people want to keep track of, I know you and I have used Mint before, but they've shut down. So if you want to keep track of all of your finances and you're also afraid of putting everything in the cloud because if someone hacks your Google Drive, now they have access to all of your, uh, assuming that's where you store it, right? They have access to all of your information. So can you put this, it's also security, but just not look in the video like we talked about where, we can uh, do some segmentation if possible and identify who's walking in. But for my finance, if I have uh, bank accounts, credit card accounts, mortgage accounts and all that, to be able to kind of have a, our own box where we have some processing power that can look at the trends and say, hey, by the way, it looks like you're spending a little bit more or your credit cards coming up, whatever, your personal assistant applications like that, where if I'm, I'm not somebody who's technical, I send this, I just sell this as a widget. You buy it for sixty dollars, hundred dollars, whatever you buy it for. You plug into your laptop. Maybe it downloads a small model. Everything happens like an install, and then now you have a tool that works, and you don't need to know anything. But it now works for that particular use case. I can see a lot of right. value where entrepreneurs can do that, right? Right. So I think one of the key difference you have to highlight is that. Um, Remember, we talked about Qualcomm and others releasing small models for the phone, right? So mm -hmm. that's the type of capacity. It, it uses TensorFlow Lite. Um, so any model mm -hmm. that's TensorFlow Lite compatible probably goes into this type of a use case. Um, they are edge uh, oriented, right? It's not going to be the same fidelity as your large language models running in the server, but it'll have some limit. So it's more geared towards smaller, more specialized things that can run with the limited compute. Um, and the limited compute is definitely better than the CPU compute, but it, it has a it has a graphics uh, card type of, uh, what do you call, um, uh, what do you call the cores or whatever they, they build into this will give you that uh, processing power for this type of operation, the math operations, right? Um, but it's still limited. It's not going to do, you can't expect it to do um, the Llama 3.17 billion generation yet, right? <laughs> uh, but, so uh, it, it's still, I, I mean, even if for 7 billion model, it's the practical thing is you're still running in my, if you don't want to quantize it, you still need a gaming desktop to even run it. Um, so okay. this is this is going to be even smaller, but I think that's where the fun is, right? If people take this and start creating these smaller, tiny versions of models that does very specific things, then you very have the, right. Then we have these smaller hardware. Uh, may, it could be toys, that maybe the toy next generation of toys, right? We have seen it in so many movies where the toys are talking, interacting, doing stuff with you, right? So that could be a next generation of toys or a next generation of uh, home monitoring systems. IoT devices now are getting uh, extra boost with decision-making power. There, there's a lot of things that is going to come that way rather than, it's not a competing thing. It's more um, trying to do more, achieve more on the edge type of use case. That is very cool. I mean, the toys that opens up, like it could be a companion, it could be a trainer, just small things that they can do. That's very cool. I, I mean, to your point, this is just uh, like a platform, right? Anybody can... If you have the right vision and you have a very unique problem you want to solve that doesn't require massive compute, then there's an opportunity here for entrepreneurs to build on this. So that's very cool. All right. I know we have uh, a lot more topics to cover, but we're going to wrap it up for here today. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in and have a great day. Thanks, Rajiv.